Visit sayaright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant from Sayright. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make a traditional boxed cushion. This boxed cushion includes a boxing which is seamed at the corners. And if you'd like, you can install piping or without piping. The zipper is on the back side. Let's get started. We have a separate video which highlights seven different techniques to make a cushion. It should help you make an educated decision on which approach works best for your desired results. Click the link in the upper right hand corner or in the description below to watch. Making a traditional box cushion with seamed corners is the old tried and true method of making cushions. However, it is slightly more labor intensive when compared to the newer quick and easy or the 30 minute box corner cushion approach. That being said, it has some advantages that the other newer approaches can't achieve. First, piping can be utilized, and second, an irregularly shaped cushion can be made. We'll be using the Sayrite fabric calculator and cutting the plates to size based on it. We're going to use the Sayrite fabric calculator to determine how much materials to buy and how to cut our fabric to size. You can find this calculator at the Sayrite website. Click on Cushions. Then click on Box Cushions. Enter your fabric's width and the size of the cushion that you desire. This tutorial covers seamed boxing, so be sure seamed is clicked instead of continuous. Click the question mark for more details. Then click Add Cushion. You'll notice that list of materials so you can purchase all the supplies that are necessary and some cut sizes. Scroll down to the rendering and you can see the exact sizes to cut for the plates, the boxing, and the zipper plaque. Panels can be moved around and rotated and much more for better nesting. For a detailed video explaining how to use the calculator, navigate back to the main menu, click on box cushions, then scroll down on the first screen and you'll see two tutorial videos there. This is our decorative fabric. It doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. It's 100% Sushin dyed acrylic upholstery fabric called Outdura. It's phenomenal for upholstery applications because it's extremely UV, water, and stain resistant. And I'm just gonna use, the, in this situation, I'm using a chalk pencil to uh, uh, cut our plates to the right size. And I use the fabric calculator to, to determine that size. This video will cover everything, but if you'd like a list of what we're going to do, here it is. I like to cut the fabric with the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife. This will seal the edge of the acrylic fabric and prevent it from unraveling. You could also use scissors. It would unravel, but the seams are on the inside or pinking shears. So here we're using the Sayerite Edge Cordless Hot Knife. and We have a corded one that's a little bit less expensive as well. Our top plate is cut out. We're going to use the top plate as a pattern for the bottom plate because we're going to use the same decorative fabric for this cushion. And this does have some small stripes and we're going to match up those small stripes even though you probably don't have to do this. So I'm going to match them up here and then I'm going to make sure that the fabric is not askew and match them up here as well. And then we're going to cut this out using the top plate as our pattern for the bottom plate. So now I can just use the hot knife right next to the top pattern to cut out the bottom. Cutting the boxing to size is next. Sayerite usually cuts the boxing width a half inch larger than the thickness of foam. According to the Sayerite fabric calculator, the thickness of our cushion is three inches, or our foam is three inches. We need to cut the boxing width for the three sides, not including the zipper plaque, a half inch larger, so three and a half inches. Going back to the fabric calculator, you scroll down to the rendering and you can see the width of the boxing here at 3.5 for three strips and for the zipper plaque 4.75. So I have the top plate and the bottom plate cut and now I need to make boxing. And the boxing is the same exact length as each side of the top or bottom plate. I'm going to match up my pattern so that it's perfect directly across from this piece and I'm going to cut strips that are going this up this edge. So what I need to do is I need to mark where the, when the pattern matches up here, it's a little bit hard to see that mark because it's white, and also here. 
So here's my mark, and it's not uncommon for upholstery fabric to be fairly light, and sometimes you have to manipulate it to make sure that it's lining up to a pattern, if it has a pattern at all. So now I can see that it is lined up perfectly. I'm just using my fingernail to kind of push it over. There we go. And now I can mark it up a little bit high. And we know this is our cut. We still have to do the width of the boxing. I'm only doing the, uh, the uh, length of it right now. We'll do the same thing over here. So you'll notice here that I have, I'm cutting the fabric with the hot knife right now. I have uh, three strips and one larger strip. So I've got one, two, three, and then this is our boxing. And the calculator says to cut the boxing to four and uh, three quarter inches and to cut it two inches longer here and two inches longer here than our other boxing pieces because sometimes when you sew zippers, they have a tendency to shrink up. So that's why I made my first cut there. Then I'll go ahead and cut these apart in the same manner. This is my mark, I can see it, I hope you can. If we go back to the fabric calculator at the rendering, we can see that the three and a half inch boxing, the three strips, equals the sides of the plate, but the zipper plaque is longer. Well, for large cushions, sometimes the zipper plaque can shrink up when you sew the zipper in. The extra length may not be required for smaller cushions, and it's also not required for pattern matching because you still have to match up the pattern to the top plate, so you'll have to stretch it if it shrunk slightly. All of our boxing and our plates are cut to size. This is our front. These are the sides. Obviously, stripes aren't going to line up for the sides. We didn't expect that to happen, but our back will. This is our zipper plaque boxing piece. We're probably gonna start with this one and insert the zipper in that first. It's now time to sew the zipper into the zipper plaque boxing that we cut to size. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my zipper plaque boxing, and this is the wider one, and I'm gonna fold it so outside surfaces are facing each other. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut a little triangle out here so I know where the center is. And I'll do the same thing on this end down here. I'm going to take a clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to put it on the center mark and I'm going to take my chalk or whatever marking utensil you're using and I'm going to uh, do a line and then I'm going to take my hot knife and I'm going to cut right on that line to cut this into two separate pieces. This is our number five coil Linzip zip zipper and I'm putting a quarter inch seam stick for canvas and upholstery down both sides of the zipper. This will help hold it in place. It's a double-sided tape. And notice the teeth are facing up. If you look at the back side here, there are no teeth there, so make sure that you put it on the side with the teeth. Okay, we're gonna take one side off of the double-sided tape, leaving the other side on. This exposes the glue. And make sure this is the outside surface, which we know it is, because the stripes match up. And I cut my zipper a little bit long, and all we wanna do is just basically leave a little bit hangover and match up the edge and baste it down so the teeth are facing down against the outside surface of the fabric. Okay, that one's done like that. There's what it looks like on the inside. Now I'm gonna take this, then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna baste this uh, fold in place. You can actually take it to the machine and sew it, but I find that this is easier and, and it doesn't shrink as much because you only have to sew it once. So we're going to put double-sided tape on the decorative fabric and then we're going to peel this off. We're going to do one side of the zipper at a time, so we're not going to do this one yet. Now what I do is I just take this and I fold it over the teeth so that it's, the teeth are centered and baste it down. So spend your, take some time to do this because you want to try to be accurate with this. If you've done it right, when you measure from your fold to the edge, you should have half of your boxing width that you have for the other ones. We have 1.75, which is half of three and a half. It's perfect. We're gonna put our machine in about four to five millimeter straight stitch and our reverse as well. And we're gonna move our needle to the right to get closer to the zipper's teeth. And then we're gonna sew with our assembly to the right of the presser foot and the presser foot will be up against the teeth. So what I do is put it, the presser foot down, hold the trailing threads, and sew here. And we'll do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning. 
and then we'll sew down the length and when we get to the other end, we're gonna reverse there as well. Try to be consistent with this because everybody will see this. And once we're done with this side, we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side in the same manner. Okay, we have to do the same thing with the other one, but you wanna make sure the stripes are matched up and basically that all, the, all that means is you have to make sure the ends are lined up. So we're gonna peel off the transfer paper here. This would go facing down. And we just need to make sure these ends are lined up as you baste it down so this ends flush. Peel off the transfer paper. Now the nice thing about double-sided tape is as you're folding this over, you can make sure that your stripes are matched up perfectly. And if they're not, you can make adjustments. Uh, you can peel it back up and reapply it, but it looks like our stripes are perfect. So we're gonna do this down the length and then we're gonna take it to the machine and sew it. Okay, once the zipper plaque is sewn, which it is, we're gonna break apart the zipper by just pulling on the ends to about a couple inches. And then we're gonna take the slider and we're gonna put it onto the end of the zipper and start it evenly. Slider puller is facing up the outside of the fabric. I push it on with this finger until I hear a pop, which I already did, and your slider is installed. I'm gonna put the slider someplace in the middle and leave it hanging there. The slider is zipping this direction. So if you'd like, you can put a little pocket on to kind of hide that um, slider. And what I've done here is I've cut it to the width of the boxing, which is three and a half inches for us. Yours may be different. And I've cut it three inches long. You can cut it to four if you'd like, if you want a bigger pocket. So to prepare for this, I'm just gonna put some double-sided tape on the inside. And let's see, we'll put it on, and then we'll peel off the paper backing and fold it in half. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some just at the ends, top, the short ends here and we'll call this the back side. Peel this off, and let's go ahead and baste this in place so we don't forget it, because I don't have to pre-sew it in place. I can just baste it, make sure it stays in place. Match up your pattern so you know where your end is. This is where our end will be, so I'm gonna put it right like that. There we go. With the pattern matched up for our zipper plaque, we're gonna go ahead and trim it so that it's exactly the size of our plate and that means we're gonna trim it here. And I'm not using the hot knife for this. You could if you'd like, I'm just using scissors. So make sure the pattern's matched up before you do that. The excess is for shrinkage, but we're doing pattern matching and our cushion's rather small, so it's not as important. And we're gonna cut it here, and then we'll be ready. Next, we'll sew the ends of the boxing together. Now we're gonna join the ends of the boxing together. And uh, I'm putting basting tape on here and here, and also here and here. Uh, the reason I do that is if I were doing a large cushion, this just makes it so much easier to, and I don't make mistakes. Um, this is a small cushion, it probably wouldn't be necessary, but it definitely helps. So now remember, this is the outside surface, and these will be the outside surfaces. That's why I did it like this. This is the outside surface, they'll be facing each other. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this, and we wanna just match it up to this one, and we don't have to worry about pattern matching right now because we cut everything so that it would be pattern matched. And all we have to do is this, and it's held down in place. Then we do the, I, I usually open it up like this, then I take this piece and I do it like that. So this makes it really easy. You don't have to think hardly about anything. Outside surfaces always face each other. And then open this up, and then this one would go outside surfaces to outside surfaces like that. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just showing what it should look like. This is basically it. And you could use pins to make sure these don't come apart if your cushion's big or uh, fabric clips. Uh, we're not gonna do that because it's a small cushion and I'll be careful with it. Let's take it to the machine. We're gonna put our needle in the center position. We wanna make sure that we sew a half inch from the needle. So I'm gonna put this on the half inch mark of the needle plate. Now that's really important and uh, we're gonna sew each one of these down. Now this one has the zipper in it, and I'll probably just do a little bit of, of reversing over the top of the zipper to make sure that it's secured well, and obviously reversing at the end. So here I'm sewing over the zipper, and I'll reverse once, sew to the end, reverse here, now I don't even take out my fabric, I just go to the next one that's basted together. That's one of the nice things of basting it together and I sew right through it. 
and I do a little bit of reverse in here. And we'll just repeat this until we have all four corners sewing. Want to add a custom piping? Watch this chapter. If not, skip it. We're going to be installing piping in the bottom plate just to show how to do it. So what's the best practice to determine the width of your piping strip if you're making it yourself? Well, that is to take the piping that you're using and then measure to see what the seam allowance is. And you, for us, it needs to be a half inch. So as you can see, that's a half inch. So then what I do is I actually cut on the other side right there. And then I measure that from the cut. Where's the, there's the cut to the end. And let me move this so you can see that. That is the width of the strip of piping that I need to cut. So it's about one and a half inches, just a little bit more. So straight cut or bias cut piping, which is best? Well, bias is best for going around corners and it doesn't unravel as much if you cut it with scissors. And so that's what I'm doing here. But a straight cut binding is really easy. So I, I need to cut my uh, piping to one and a half inches. So let's cut a few, or mark a few strips to that size and we'll show you what's next. So I'm gonna use a hot knife to cut it, even though I did cut it on the bias, which prevents unraveling. Well, it doesn't prevent it, it reduces it. This will almost prevent it completely. I had to cut two strips because I need at least six feet, probably seven feet. Okay, so you wanna take your two strips and lay them on top of each other. If you have more, then you obviously just take all the strips and lay it on top of each other. And you wanna cut a perfect 45. And I'm gonna lay it at the 45 on the clear acrylic ruler. So this, for, this is right along the bottom edge. And then I still like to use the hot knife because I don't like the unraveling that I get. And I'll just touch that. And I know I probably shouldn't be doing it against a clear acrylic ruler, but I'm trying to be careful so I don't damage it. There we go. So then what you do to join two ends together is you take your top piece and you flip it over and you put it almost 90, so it makes a 90 degree corner. And you should have two little dog ears like that. And I'm gonna pin it there. So I'm gonna pin it outside my half inch seam allowance because that's what I'm gonna probably sew. So that hopefully that doesn't get in the way. And we'll take it to the machine and we'll sew it from here to there. So don't worry if you don't have a half inch seam allowance. What you're trying to do is just sew it from that corner to that next corner. So we just sew right there. We're gonna do some reversing to make sure it doesn't come apart. Reversing there. Pull the pin, let's see what it looks like. Not too bad. Now we, we wanna make sure that we put our piping in the area where there's seam allowance. So make sure you're sewing on the right side so the seam allowance is up. And then we'll start at the beginning here. Then I just put the piping in and I fold it over and then feed it through the machine. I don't expect my first inch or so to be nice. I'm just trying to get it started here. And I wanna try to keep this folded up neatly as I sew and no reason to do any reversing. So all I do is I just keep folding it and sewing. So this makes your uh, piping so that you can take it to the cushion and use it appropriately. In this next chapter, we're gonna be installing the boxing to the plate. It does not include a piping, but you can put one in if you like. The next chapter after this one shows that. Now, one of the important things about using basting tape on the plates is that you can make sure everything is matched up perfectly before you sew it. So I recommend putting it on all four sides of your top plate. That's the one we're starting with. I'm gonna peel back the basting tape at one of the corners. This is the corner for our zipper plaque, so we know that it matches up there. I'll just peel this all the way off. And I'm gonna make sure that the pattern is matched up here, which should mean that the edges are lined up perfectly now, I can't see the pattern on this side, which is unfortunate because the pattern's actually different on the top. So I have to look at the top to see if it's perfectly matched up because the back side is a, has a little bit of a different pattern on it. So I'll just go ahead and baste all the way to this corner. 
and then I'll inspect it and if it's off I'll make modifications. So now that it's basted down I can open it up and I can see my pattern is just about perfect. So that one's perfect. Now every time you get to a corner you want to cut a relief slit going no deeper than your seam allowance which is a half inch and I like to do it right beside that stitch and that allows that to open up. So watch. So now what you can see happening is that opens. Now there's no, there's no pattern matching on the side so we don't have to worry about that. But let's go ahead and cut all of our corners. You just need to cut one side of the boxing, not both, at each corner going no deeper than your seam allowance. So right about there. We're going to do that to all the corners. So here we are at the next corner. I just have a slit in there. Now here we got to do some pattern matching but we can't see it here. We can see it there. It looks like I need to pull a little bit more. You can see that that's not lining up perfectly right there. You can see that white one. So that's easy to fix. That's the beauty of the double sided tape. So I'm going to peel it up a little bit and I'm going to pull a little bit on this top plate and baste it down and then inspect it and look at that. We got it perfect again. So you can manipulate things just a little bit as long as you don't manipulate them too much. Okay, you can leave the uh, double sided tape at the corners, but I like to take it out so that I can butterfly the corners. So I'm actually going to peel it up a little bit here and uh, I want to be careful that I don't peel it off of my plate. And then I'm going to grab the double sided tape with my fingernails and peel it out. Okay, now the reason that I do that, and I'll do that at all four corners, is let's just start sewing around the perimeter. I've got my a magnetic guide at a half inch, so I'm going to be sewing a half inch seam allowance. You can start pretty much anywhere. And let's just sew around. And when I get to this corner, what I'll do is I'll make sure that this fabric is not tucked up in here. I'll pull it kind of out so that I don't sew through that. And I put my finger there so that I'm not sewing that. I'm going to take this that I took out the double sided tape and I'm going to butterfly it out like that. Uh, so that it rests nicely when the uh, corner is made. And I'll sew it to my seam. I'm in my seam now. And I'll rotate the balance wheel by hand, raising the needle slightly, lift my presser foot, rotate on the buried needle. That's important. Pull this assembly around so we can sew down the other side and tuck the fabric in there. And notice that we're not right at the corner. That's not going to matter. And then we'll sew down this side in the same manner, okay? So we're gonna do that all around the perimeter. In this chapter, we're gonna add piping around one of the plates. You could add it to none of the plates or both of the plates if you like. This is our last plate and this is the assembly. And we have a pattern that has stripes and the stripes on the other, other side are different than the stripes on this side. So we have to take this assembly and we have to lay it on top of our, sec our last plate and we have to not look at the stripes on this side, but on the outside. So outside surfaces are facing each other. And do they line up? And I can see these don't line up. So I'm going to move this aside and I'm going to flip this to this side. And then I'm going to take this outside surfaces are facing each other, but I'm not looking at the pattern on this side because it's different on the outside surface. And do, does this line up? Yes, it does. So I know that this is the back edge where the zipper is because that's where this is. This is the outside surface and we have to put our plate on like this. So I'm going to put a big X with my chalk right here so that I know that that's the back side outside surface and it matches up perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and put the quarter inch seam stick for basting tape around the entire perimeter. I'm going to take off the transfer paper revealing the glue all around the perimeter. So there's our X at the bottom. I'm going to open up a little bit of this uh, piping just by uh, breaking the stitches so that I can uh, feed it inside to the end of this. So I'll basically leave in a couple inches. And I'm going to start it um, so that this is just about an inch or so past the X. And I'm going to do it so the flange is on the outside. So there's my X, which is approximately the middle put this on and I'm going to base this around the perimeter and we'll go all the way around and we'll show you what we do when we get to the beginning again. At the corner I want to cut a slit about a half inch from the edge of the fabric here uh, all the way up to my stitch but not going into the stitch 
and that will allow this to take the turn. So watch, I'll base that down and then I can pivot the piping and the piping is a little bit on the stiff side. It doesn't want to take a 90 degree, but it, I can force it to and baste it down. So we'll do that at every single corner. We've come to the back side and I have a little bit of extra. I'm going to peel this back and I don't want to cut too much of it out because I want a little bit of extra fabric, but I'm going to cut this like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this so that it's flush like that. And hopefully, okay, so I, I'm pretty close and I think that's, I think I need to cut a little bit more so that it's uh, flush. And you can tape it if you'd like, but I'm not going to. Going to. Then I'm going to have this go over the top and wrap around and actually put a little fold in this or hem so that it can be hemmed nicely so you have a finished edge. And I'll just base that down and I'll put this in the inside and tuck that over. And there we have a beautiful transition. Our plate now includes the piping. If you didn't want piping, you just skip that part. Now we're going to assemble the final plate. So we haven't sewn anything besides the piping when we made it, and we put double-sided tape again on the flange here because now we're going to base the two assemblies apart. But notice that I kept the double-sided tape as far away from the piping as possible because we don't want it to show up in the end. Now this is our, our uh, plate, and what we want to do is we want to cut the corners just like we did before. So I'm going to cut in uh, at each corner just so I can do this in advance, uh, going no deeper than our seam allowance and right beside our stitch. This is the outside surface, and we need to make sure out, this is the outside surface too. Our seam allowance will be facing up. So, and we know this is the back because this is the uh, middle position. And we're going to peel off the transfer paper, and we're really going to just base this on in the same manner that we did before. We're going to start here at one of the corners, and it should be almost flush with it. We want to try to make sure that the patterns are, are matched up as we do this, and we're going to baste it around. And we're going to check our pattern as we baste. Oh yeah, that's looking good. See, it's matched up here. Now, it won't be matched up to the piping. We didn't intend for that. It's a bias cut piping. Even a straight cut piping would not be matched up. Now, one of the important things about basting tape, if you were making a large cushion and you didn't use basting tape to base the boxing on, uh, you may not hit your corners exactly and your, your cushion would be askew. Um, you would have to use matchup marks. If you use basting tape like this, you don't have to use matchup marks. Now, before we go into the other side, we're going to check our pattern. It looks really good. So now we're going to do this side over here. We already cut the slits, so that opens up this area here. This side, we don't have to worry about matchup marks, but we do have to make sure the corner falls at the right spot. And if it doesn't, we can peel it up and reposition it. And looks like it is going to fall. Let's see. It's a little, yeah, see, it's, it's outside. So what I do, that's, that, this is a good thing to show, is I peel it back up, and it was a little bit long. So I'm going to start here, and you can actually um, pull the fabric back or introduce small little dinky wrinkles that won't be noticeable. So I'm basically allowing loose spots here, and then I baste it down, and a little bit of a loose spot there, baste it down here, and... If I hit my corner right, oh yeah, that's much better. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll go back after I've hit it right and I'll just smooth it down, knocking down all these little wrinkles. And after sewing, they won't show up. So we're gonna go all around the perimeter, just like this. So we have it basted all around the perimeter. One way you can check the back if you wanna make sure the stripes are aligned appropriately is to open up the zipper and then take a look at them there. And remember, we don't wanna look at the piping, we wanna look at our boxing. So if it's off, you can make adjustments that way. I like to start in the back of the cushion. That way the uh, overlap of the stitch uh, happens in the back in case you know, I miss. There's piping in here, but we do have a cording tunnel. So I'll, I, I, I can feel the piping and I'm just gonna bury it here. And I will not do any reversing. I'm just simply gonna sew around. There we're going over that transition in the middle where the piping joins itself. And when we get to the corner, I'll show you what we do there. And hopefully you have the 
gist of how this is done. So we got to make sure that we don't sew in this excess fabric, so I'm just going to pull it out like that. And I'm going to just hold this down. When I get to that cut, which I am right now, the needle's coming up, but still buried. Lift the presser foot, pull this around, just like we did the, the other corners, even though there's piping in here. I'm going to push this excess fabric back with some tool, just so that it's not folded back. Kind of, kind of butterfly it, but not worry too much about what it looks like, because this is the inside of the cushion and sew down this side in the same manner. So we did a 90 degree turn. If you really could use the magnetic guide, uh, if you would want just to make sure that you're sewing in the right spot here, because I know that's where the piping goes, but you don't have to for that, because you're basically uh, sewing on top of piping. Uh, if you didn't have piping, I'd definitely be using the magnetic guide no matter what. Cutting your foam to size is next, and you'll find your foam at Sailrite. To determine the size of foam for your project, go back to the fabric calculator and look under the list of materials. I've marked my foam to size with a permanent marker, and you can use an electric kitchen knife that you use to carve a turkey for Thanksgiving, or you can use a serrate blade foam saw, which makes almost a perfectly vertical cut. We'll start with show, demonstrating the serrate blade foam saw. For this approach, what I do is I usually use the edge of a sacrificial table so I can hold my blade straight, and I line the line up with the table and put a weight on top. So as you can see, this method works as well. Now it's time to insert the foam in the cushion cover. Next we'll open up the zipper if it isn't opened up already and pull it right side out and we can inspect our work and push out the corners. Inspect your piping. If your stitch is too far from it, you can always take it back and re-sew it because nobody sees the stitches on the inside. Ours looks great. Now it's time to insert the foam. Now you can do this with a silk film if you'd like, uh, which sucks down the foam um, and also creates a water barrier. But you can also get foam in uh, just by compressing it like this. I'm going to show this in double time, um, or maybe even triple time, because it does take a while. While we're stuffing the foam in the cushion cover, let's talk about foam. We're using Cushion Right Premium Foam. It is a high density foam, which means you can use it heavily and it will last for years without bottoming out. If you plan on using your cushion occasionally, consider Cushion Right Standard Foam. It is a medium density foam. In short, if the foam is used heavily, the higher the density, the longer the life of the foam, while indentation force deflection, or IFD, has to do with how soft or firm the foam is when sat upon. So I'm pretty happy with the way it's uh, in here, and all we need to do now is just zip it up and do our final massaging. Um, and uh, you're going to have to massage it, so don't think that you can just zip it up and be done. And look at this, here's our pocket for the slider. So it goes right in there, like that. And a little bit of final massaging. This is the side without the uh, piping. And you can see we have some pretty nice crisp corners, the way we designed it. And this is the side with our piping. And hopefully our stripes match up and looks like they match up almost perfectly. They're a little bit off in the front over here, from here to here, but not too bad. So there we go. Coming up next is the materials and the tools that we used to make this traditional box cushion with seamed corners. You can find thousands of decor and upholstery fabrics at Sayerite. We used Outdura, 100% solution dyed acrylic upholstery fabric, excellent for indoor and outdoor applications. Now this video is part of a set of six tutorials showing different techniques to sew cushions. Click on the playlist to see others. If you have any questions about the materials or the tools that we used, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. 
I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.